Why am I playing that? Because we're talking reference triangles here. So we're going to be using some triangles. If you check out my pictures here, probably thinking, what is a reference triangle? I don't even know if you guys remember if reference books still exist now that we got uh, Google and Wikipedia. These are encyclopedias, and what are they doing? Check it out right here. They're making a triangle. This is a reference triangle. Boom. Lessons done. Shortest lesson ever. Just kidding. Here we go. Uh, we're going to use these reference triangles a lot. We're, this whole unit is about the unit circle. So what is a unit circle? Unit circle is just a circle with radius 1. But a lot of special things happen with this. We really, 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 really like it uh, for trig and some cool things. As opposed to a circle with any radius r. So you know if I'm talking about radius r, what we're going to end up doing, and this actually is a reference triangle right here, we're going to drop a perpendicular line right here and make a nice little triangle with theta. And the reason we do that, if we think about this point, this point is over x up y. Uh, well, this side of the triangle is over x. This is up y. So we can start looking at you know, the sine of angle theta. Well, the sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r. We can find the cosine of this as adjacent as x over r. And we can do our tangent opposite over adjacent. So it's cool, uh, you know, for this triangle in a circle. But what happens when it when we do this reference triangle when the radius is one? We still have our x and y and our theta. Uh, but what happens here with sine? This is something pretty cool. It's opposite over hypotenuse, or it's y over one. So really, we're going to say, ooh, y in a unit circle is sine. What is cosine? It's x over 1 or just x. So we can start to say, ooh, this value here of x and y is really the cosine of theta, the sine of theta. So some cool things coming up this uh, chapter. If that doesn't fire you up, I don't know what will. That's where we're heading with this thing. Let's start building these reference triangles so uh, to pull it all together here. So what is a reference triangle? It's when we t draw a right triangle drawn to the x-axis. So I'm going to give you you know, standard position, uh, standard position angle here, the terminal side with a point on it. What are you going to do? You're going to drop a nice perpendicular right there. So in this case, I didn't draw the circle that goes through it. We're just talking about this point. So we're talking about that. It would be negative 3, and that would be positive 4. So first thing we're going to have to do is find the hypotenuse over here. So some great things to remember. These are Pythagorean triples. A 3, 4, 5 always works out. 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17. There's a couple other bigger ones if you want to keep going on Pythagorean triples. But these are the common ones you'll see. So it saves you a little time. Like if you didn't know that, we can find this missing side, this hypotenuse, by saying what? Negative 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A little Pythagorean theorem. And that negative doesn't really matter. I may even leave it off later on if I get too lazy. But we can say, oh, yeah, that's going to be c squared equals 25. So this side is 5. And why are we doing that? Well, this is going to be theta here. The one right on, everything is off the x-axis. So theta is touching the x-axis. So what is the sign? It's opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 4 fifths. So we're looking for these exact values. We're looking for these trig ratios as fractions. So I'm not going to want any decimals. I don't ever want you to find that the degree measure of that angle. I want this nice exact trig ratio. Awesome. What if I don't give you the picture? Can you still do this? Yeah, sure thing. Plot the point, negative 3, negative 6, and it can be rough. Somewhere down here. We're talking about this right here. So what are we going to do? We're going to drop that perpendicular always to the x-axis. Theta is always touching the x-axis. So if we know that's negative 3, 6, we know that's negative 3. We know that's negative 6. This hypotenuse, always positive. So in this case, it's not one of these Pythagorean triples. So like those are nice. But it doesn't always work out. In this case, I'm going to actually have to do, and again, if you want to put that negative in there, it's going to be positive. Negative 3, negative 6 equals that c squared. And then let's solve this bad boy. We're talking 9 plus 36. So what is that, 45? So we're really talking about the square root of 45. Is that simplified, though? Is that the best we can do? No, we can do better. We got this. This is really 9 times 5. And that's really 3 radical 5. So really, we should call that 3 radical 5. Now can I find the cosine of theta? Sure, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's negative 3 over 3 radical 5. So the negative sign stays in there. Ooh, is that simplified? No, we can go more. Let's do more. We don't like the radical on the bottom. So what am I going to do? 
I'm going to times it by radical 5. So again, we're going to have to kind of simplify this. We're we'll looking at negative 3 radical 5 all over what is radical 5 times 5, or radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. So what is 3 times 5? It is 15. Does that even reduce? Sure, this goes into that 5 times. So 3 goes itself once. So we're looking at negative radical 5 all over 5. That is the cosine, the exact cosine of theta. We never found the angle. We don't have any decimals. That's the nice exact value. Boom. Love it. Reference triangles. Let's do another one. This is the last way you're going to see it. Um, I went ahead and drew this x and y axis. So if I'm going to draw one of these, I need my little coordinates here. Uh, it says, okay, theta is in quadrant 4, and it has this sine value. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my reference triangle in quadrant 4. And again, it can be rough. It doesn't have to be to scale. As long as you get this, again, to the x-axis, theta has to be touching the x-axis right here. Right angle on the x-axis. Now start labeling the points. Sine is what? Opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 3 over 5. Opposite of theta is 3. Hypotenuse is always from the right angle. Who's negative? Well, we said the hypotenuse can never be negative, and it makes sense you're going over and down, so he's definitely the negative. Maybe you recognize it, 3, 4, 5 triangle. Also, you know, 3, 4, 5 triangle, doubles of this work, so you may see 6, 8, 10. Same thing with 5, 12, 13. If you double it, it still works, 10, 24, 26. Uh, or whatever, do Pythagorean theorem. Um, if you didn't catch the triple there, that's fine, but it's going to work out friendly. Once we have this all drawn, can we find the cosine of theta? So what is that cosine value? Well, cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we're looking at 4 over 5. Done and done. There it is. Reference triangle. This can be tricky, so take your time with the practice. Check. All right, so before we get uh, going further in these uh, reference triangles, I want to talk about reciprocal trig functions. So we've already talked about sine. Like We're good to go with sine. Sine is what? It is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we knew that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we've been playing with those. We're getting pretty good at those. So we have these new functions over here. So this CSC, I should have wrote this out, my handwriting's bad, really equals cosecant. So that is the cosecant. And it's a reciprocal function. Do you remember reciprocals? Probably the most common thing you think of is like, hey, I've got a slope of a line three fourths. I want to know its negative reciprocal uh, would be what? Its reciprocal would be four thirds. So uh, we did it for perpendicular lines, we would do the negative reciprocal, or this is the multiplicative inverse when they would cancel like this. So that's some things for reciprocals. It really means flip the fraction. So if cosecant over here is the reciprocal of sine, it means flip the fraction. So what happens? This becomes hypotenuse over opposite. Ooh, that's kind of weird the first time you see it. Uh, and this other one, SEC, this is not a, a college conference uh, this is secant right here so this is the secant and the secant is the reciprocal of cosine so I think it looks like it's spelled backwards cosine secant so it looks like they're spelled backwards that's how I remember that so what do you do flip it flip that over and you've got hypotenuse over adjacent and then what is cotangent oops I didn't write it out cot it's not really cot don't say cot it's cotangent, so we should have these, write these down, make sure you have these. It is the cotangent, and you flip it, so now, now we're talking about the adjacent over opposite. So these sometimes come in handy for some different things we're going to do. Don't freak out when you see them, but we have to know them. Another little way you may see them, and later on, is you may see them actually written as um, 1 over, like cosecant is 1 over the sine of theta. That is the reciprocal of it. You're just flipping it over. Uh, this is 1 over cosine, and this is 1 over tangent. So that'll probably come up later on uh, in a different chapter. Don't want to freak out when you see that. So how do I do with a triangle? You know, you, no problem with sine here. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. It's 5 over 13. If I want to find the reciprocal function, cosecant, flip it over. So it's really easy if you find sine, you just flip it. If you went straight to cosecant, it's kind of weird to think about, but cosecant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this will be hypotenuse over adjacent. Or if you don't like that, go ahead and find cosine, flip it. Tangent, I know is opposite over adjacent. What do I got to do here? Flip it over. So we're going to do some things with these reciprocal functions here. Let's get into it. Put it all together. We got reference triangles. We got reciprocal functions. This is kind of as hard as it's going to get right here. I'm going to give you some theta that's somewhere in one of these four quadrants. I'm going to tell you the sine value is this, 
you need to find all six trig functions. Well, there's one of them right there. The sine of theta is 8 over 17. What quadrant is this? Remember, this is pi over 2. This is pi, you know, degrees, no problem. 90 degrees, 180 degrees. This is 1 and a half pi, or 3 halves pi. This is back to 2 pi. So we're looking at, in degree land, between 90 and 180. So I'm over here. And again, it can be rough. Who cares? You're just drawing a triangle in there. So I know it's in this quadrant. I know theta is touching the x-axis. Everything's on that x-axis. What is the uh, sine of this opposite over hypotenuse? So this is 8. I'm going to redraw that 8. That's terrible. 8 over 17. Uh, what is this missing side? You can do Pythagorean theorem. You can do 8 squared plus missing side squared equals 17 squared. If you know your triples, though, it's going to work out to be 15, 8, 15, 17, but you could solve that. Uh, so I've got my reference triangle, so I know sine is that. So we know the sine of theta is 8 over 17. That means cosine of theta is what? Well, be careful because this is negative. I've got to be real careful that you in the negative direction. So that is negative 15 over 17. And then the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it should be 8 over negative 15. Excellent. Can we get these new reciprocal functions going on? The cosecant, flip it, is 17 over 8. The secant is what negative 17 over 15 and then the cotangent is flip that over negative 15 over 8. Sometimes this gets crazy when you got some radicals in here some simplifying but just follow your rules like earlier and you'll be good to go. So draw the reference triangle find all six trig functions that means three ones we already knew plus the three reciprocal functions and you are good to go. Some things to help you out here is when are things positive and negative? So I'm going to straight up ask you questions when they're positive and negative because we're going to need this. All this is building up to our, our awesome unit circle. So when I think about first quadrant, remember these different quadrants? This is quadrant 1, uh, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And if things end up hitting these, these are called quadrantals. I think I said that right. <laughs> That's a weird word, quadrantal. If they end up right in between them. Um, so what's positive over here? Well, you're going over and up. That is both positive. So if I graph the point on this circle, it's like going over positive, positive. Boom, boom. If this is my reference triangle, I'm going positive, positive. What's going on over here? Well, you'd be going negative, positive. And what's going on down here? You're doing a double negative, negative, negative. And over here, you're going positive, negative. So this is important. And early on, I alluded to this. Remember, we said, what is this in a unit circle with uh, 1 as my radius? We were saying this was like my cosine, and this was my sine. So this is pretty awesome right here. Like These are the different things. So the first term here, the x term, is cosine. The y term is sine on these points on the unit circle. And we're going to do a lot more of that later, but that's going to help us figure out what's going on here. So what quadrant or quadrants uh, could theta be in if sine is, I forgot my zero, <laughs> if sine is positive. So where is sine positive? So let's think about that. Sine's positive is the second one in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So I know it's positive here and here, but it also has to be cosine negative. Where's cosine negative? Cosine is the x thing, the x uh, <laughs> coordinate. So where's cosine negative? It's right over there. So it happens in 2 and 3 where they overlap. This would only be in quadrant 2. So this actually happens in 2 and 3. They overlap in 2. Holy cow, that kind of hurt my brain. Let's do some more of these. Sine of theta and tangent of theta have the exact same sign. This is not like a sine cosine thing. This is like positive negative sign. So where are sine and Tangent the same. Well, I can see sine is the second one. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Where's tangent? Well, tangent is actually, when you start thinking about this, what is tangent? Well, if tangent, if sine is this side over here, and this is cosine, what is tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta is really like saying the sine over the cosine. Holy cow. That's a lot going on right there. It's the opposite side, which is sine, or the y, over the cosine. And we're going to do a lot more of this later, but I just want to get the idea of the sines right now. So what we're talking about is if the sines are the same, let's say sine, like first quadrant, sine is positive, cosine is positive, so positive divided by a positive, tangent would actually be positive over here. So tangent is positive. Um, what else are the signs the same? Because a negative over a negative is positive would be down here. So tangent is also positive down here. 
which means over here you've got sine is positive, cosine is negative. Boom, tangent's actually negative in this quadrant, and that means tangent is negative in this quadrant here. Whew, that's a lot. So where is sine and tangent the same? Well, it looks like right here, isn't it? Sine's positive, tangent's positive, so I know it's in quadrant one. Anywhere else, tangent negative, sine's positive, sine's negative, tangent's positive. Ah, here we go. Sine's negative, tangent is negative. It looks like quadrant four as well. Oh my goodness. One more. Oh no, we've got the reciprocal functions. Cotangent and secant have opposite signs. So that's the same thing. It follows the same rules as tangent. So and this follows the same rules as cosine. So they're gonna have the same signs. If cosine's positive, well it's secant's positive. So I'm really saying, okay, where is tangent and cosine opposite? So cosine's positive, tangent's positive, nope. Cosine's negative, tangent's negative, nope. Cosine's negative, tangent's positive, it's gonna happen in three. And positive, negative, it's going to happen in 4. Those are some pretty hard ones. I'm going to try to keep them a little more tame. And now we'll bring it. Let's bring the pain on these. Fantastic. So that is it right there. A nice little shortcut that someone once showed me once uh, for all of these quadrants would be to say all students take calculus this tells you who is positive so in this one a is for all all the trig functions are positive cosine sine tangent secant cosecant cotangent everything's positive in the first quadrant you're good to go over here who's positive just the sine that's it so only sine's positive who is positive in the third quadrant just tangent because you got this negative negative so only tangent and then over here who's positive in this quadrant just cosine so if you remember all students take calculus this will at least tell you all the positive ones out there and you're good to go Excellent. That's the section right there. Good luck on the mastery check and the practice. Uh, I'm going to end you with some people in the reference section library. Hopefully I'll run these guys in the reference section. Good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.